Hello and welcome to the Women's Football Podcast in association with We Love Sport. I'm Nicole Holiday, and this is another of our Euros Hangout specials. And we are here at the famous Three Kings in London, where we have been watching England take on Austria in the opening game of the tournament. And I'm joined by some very special guests. We have comedian, presenter, Broadcaster, he does a bit of everything. It's Superhero Andrew Mensa. Well. Not, not quite that. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. And then we have Tottenham Hotspur Women's Head Coach, Rehan Skinner. So great to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. I mean, good. guys, we just watched the opening game of the Women's Euros together. It was quite emotional. Obviously, England taking on Austria at Old Trafford. Look, we need to start with how good Old Trafford looked. It looked absolutely buzzing. It was rammed as well. So the attendance was 68,871 people. Wow, that's amazing. It looked phenomenal, didn't it? Yeah, it was so loud. Like, mm. Just even watching the game from here, I was thinking, imagine playing, the club probably can't even pass me the ball. Probably can't even hear them. No? Like, it was crazy. It was really, really exciting. It was a mad game as well. So like, just, it just felt like, oh, like women's football is here, do you know what I mean? To stay sort of thing. Yeah. You can hear the atmosphere like through the TV, couldn't you? You know, like <laughs> yeah. we're sitting and we can barely hear what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the end of the game, Beth Mead said that, they, that Serena said something, they've got no idea, all they could hear was sweet Caroline. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, they're enjoying that, they'll have a debrief later. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that sort of sums up how, how good it was. It must have been amazing inside the stadium, yeah. you oh know, for all the fans and... Everybody watching, it's just such a great spectacle, isn't it, to kick off the tournament. Yeah, even in that post-match chat, though, with Beth, I, I feel like I couldn't hear her because yeah. she was having to scream over the noise. But this is exactly what we want, and we want this to become the norm, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. I think, obviously, we've seen some record crowd attendances at lots of different events over the course of, well, the second half of the season in particular. So the fact that, you know, hosting a Euros within England and us getting, you know, that number, it sort of shows that we're capable of drawing in those types of fans as well and we want more of it, don't we? Absolutely. Now, this game... So before... Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm going to throw you both under the bus. <laughs> yeah. Earlier we were chatting about our score predictions and look, we all thought that there'd be a few more goals than we saw tonight. Um, do you think we've all got a bit carried away because in the run-up to this tournament, I mean, to be fair, from those three friendlies, I think England had scored, what, is it 12 goals in three games and con conceded one, I think? Like, we've been banging them in, it's fair to say. <laughs> did, did we kind of forget that this is a major tournament and everything, the pressure of it, you know, this game might not have been as exciting as we were hoping for? Yeah, I think half of that and half I didn't realise how good Austria actually are, yeah. <laughs> if I'm being real. Like, I thought we'd blitz them, but they, they, they pressed really well. And as you said, like that, that whole atmosphere it being in England, there's probably a lot of pressure that the girls were feeling. Mm. So it just got a bit cagey at times. But even though the game was open a lot of the time, it mm. felt like it was back and forth. But a win is a win. That's all I care about. I've got one free point, so I'm good with that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's obviously from a player's perspective, you've got to appreciate that they're at home. There's a bit of pressure attached to that. They want to do well for the fans. And obviously things have been great. So confidence is high. It didn't look like we didn't have the confidence in the game. It's just that when you start the tournament, you've just got to ease your way in. And, you know, we were speaking before that the, the teams that win tournaments don't necessarily start 100 miles an hour. They do the job that they've got to do to get through the tournament, to get to the end. And we've done the job today. Three points, that's the most important thing. Puts us in the best position we can, really, going into the next game and didn't concede again. So... Yeah, and that's the thing, though, with this home advantage is there's the flip side of the added pressure mm. that because everyone goes, oh, it's a home tournament, wow, that would be amazing for them, what an advantage. But it could also potentially mentally work against you. Do you think them playing in that stadium with all of those fans added to that as well? Like, not them not wanting to let them down, in a sense? Yeah, I think everybody feels that sense of responsibility. And, you know, and I think once you've got the first one under your belt, I think things will get easier. I think it's just the first one. You know, you want to get off to a good foot, don't you? On a good start, sorry. And and I just think with with that, sometimes you almost overcompensate. So, but now it's done. It's you know, I thought it was pretty frantic at times as well, more chaotic than what we have been. 
but then there was parts of the game that we managed better in the second half. It just looked a bit more composed. So 1-0 is still a win. So yeah. I think you, you have to be careful not to get carried away at 1-0 and like be searching for goals, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just deal with winning the game. That's the most important thing. And I thought we did that, so it's yeah. important. Well, that's a good point. What I've written on, on my little tablet first half, England look frantic <laughs> because it did, because we were kind of saying to each other, it, it just looked a bit, a bit much, a bit chaotic at points. Mm. Like they kind it's of needed to, yeah, take take a little a, a breath and calm it down a bit. Would that have been nerves and, and the occasion? Possibly. I, I mean, I think obviously credit to Austria. They started really well. They started better than us. Yeah. So I think that kind of gets you on the back foot. And I think obviously momentum is a big part of football. And if the momentum's against you in the first five minutes, you've kind of got to find your feet. And they've not really had a chance, had they? So. Um, I think as time went on, the chaotic side of it was us trying to get back in the game a little bit, you know. Um, but second half, I thought we were more controlled. I know Austria had a couple of decent chances, but it wasn't so transitional back and forth, I didn't think. I don't know about you. Yeah, do you feel like it them being like frantic a bit kind of helped us in a sense because like, we really pressed them well as well, like, mm. and, like won the ball high up the pitch. Ellen White was just like a workhorse and that. Do you think there's, there's part of it of them like wanted to win the ball early and press it, and right, it was a bit, a bit frantic as well. You know, m managing like the psychology of the going all guns blazing and trying to win the ball back to then being really calm and composed and looking after it is really challenging because it happens like at the drop of a hat. So you, you're trying to win the ball, so you, Ellen White, she's running 30 yards and putting in a slide tackle, winning it and then we're getting it and then we're not quite looking after it and so then you're chasing again and yeah. you can just so, kind of get a bit elevated emotionally. So I think it, ma it makes it a little bit harder to kind of get control of doing the things that you, you do well. But with all elite players and professional players, like they've got to work out how to actually do the things that they're good at and that's what kind of helps you to chip back into the game and I think probably half time gave us that to be honest which is probably why we were better second half. Yeah and, and of course England won the game 1-0 I don't even know if I've, I've said that already and <laughs> um, with a goal from Beth Mead love, love Beth Mead I love Beth Mead that, that goal that goal was even also a bit was chaotic frantic, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and for the first goal of the tournament it was like oh okay that's maybe not quite the sort of goal that I was expecting and there seemed to be quite a lot of confusion I mean they kept replaying Serena Vigman's reaction because she <laughs> cheers and then she's going wait what and that's what when then it went so far I mean what what on earth happened there but you know what it doesn't even matter does it because we got Are the goal of course it was Beth Mead as well with the goal she's yeah. so good isn't she you thought you were onto a winner there for your hat trick yeah when, when, you? when right, she I'm scored I was like oh my <laughs> I'm a genius, and then like, <laughs> when she went off, when she went off early in the second half, I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> what's happening?" But yeah, as I said, three points is just the main thing, and the finish was a good finish, by the way. Yeah. It just that like, crept in, crept in. So I'm happy with that. Her name has been thrown about a little bit as almost more of a dark horse for the Golden Boot potentially, because a lot of people, if you think in England, a lot of people are saying Ellen White, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but. You, you can't write off someone like Beth Mead because she's so good and we were talking about her earlier and she's really got that fight in her and that kind of fierceness. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she's a proven goal scorer. She scored a lot of goals this season for Arsenal and assisted an awful lot as well. So in terms of her contributions in the final third, whatever that looks like by the end of the tournament, for certain, she will have contributed a lot to England's success over the course of it. So, yeah, I mean, you, potentially, Dark Horse Golden Boot. Especially if she lives up to your predictions, yeah, she's, you know. I'm just she's giving her that it, energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah trust me. Yeah. Who else was you like impressed with? Um, today, um, I thought Rachel Daly did well today. I mean, I think you know she's obviously she's very solid defensively. She makes life difficult for people. She puts her body in places that a lot of people don't really want to do to win the ball back. But then within that, she's then playing simple forward passing um, forward passes that then instigate attacks and um, and getting forward herself. So I thought she did well. Um, I thought Fran showed little spells as well, but you know, ultimately, I thought the subs kind of gave it a good go as well. But you know, they're young, trying to get into things and experience, so massive experience for them today. I just think everyone's kind of chipped away at the little bits, but yeah, look, I think um, we've definitely got players that can change games, and um, today, I think, yeah, Rachel Daly, Lucy Bronze probably had the best of it for me. Mary Earps, I mean, she, she didn't have a, a ton. Mm to do at mm. po uh, large points in the game but you know she made some good saves she's looking pretty solid isn't she 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, she, I thought she made two good saves. Yeah, and the time wasting at the end. Love that. <laughs> Professional. Love that. <laughs> yeah, I think as well, like you were saying, Andrew, I think I was probably personally quite surprised at Austria. No disrespect to them, but this is a thing with tournaments, major tournaments. You, you think you know who the favourites are. You think you know how games are going to pan out, but it goes to show you can't write any team off because they are all wanting this so bad and they've shown that this is not going to be easy by any means and um, also interesting what you were saying Rianne about bringing on so we made the, that triple change in the second half bring on some of the youngsters and Austria must have been thinking oh my god because this is the thing with this team we've got so much strength and depth we have so many talented players and so many game changers as well that we can bring on at any point and I don't know teams need to be fearing us surely so sure, yeah yeah what do yeah. you think? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that one of the things that we probably could have done to make life a little bit harder, because Austria were very organised, mm. you know, when they're obviously sit they were sitting with a back five, four, one, and, you know, ultimately, I think there's areas in that when, you know, we look back at the game that could we could have exploited a little bit more to make life harder and have asked them more questions, really. So we were talking about, you know, the centre-back stepping in, Leah Williamson, Millie Bright, stepping into the game a little bit more that then affects a midfielder, which then affects a little bit of space. And off the back of that, you then start to ask questions of the defensive structure. So I think, you know, we've done that in the games leading up to this. I don't think we maybe did it as well as what we have in the friendly in this game so whilst Austria were are, are a good side I didn't think we maybe challenged them enough with some of the questions that we asked of them defensively to try and disrupt that a little bit more so hopefully you know we'll keep growing into the tournament to try and ask those questions of other teams yeah but what do you think Serena Wiegmann will take from this game tonight then good question yeah are you going first no, you're going, you're <laughs> I'm going, yeah, I'm you're going first I, only, I need to hear you so I can bounce off you <laughs> yeah. or just steal my idea <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Um, I think, yeah, I, obviously, again, people have come on into the game and, and she's got minutes in people, so I think that's a positive. Um, I think structurally, again, you know, organisationally, we, we did really well out of possession and limited the opportunities for Austria, so I think that's a positive. Um, but, like I just said then, I think the biggest thing is how can we create overloads in key areas that ask questions of other teams in the ways that we did in the second half against Netherlands, in the second half against Switzerland, where we just bombarded them with runs and movement and different timing that effectively pulled people out of position and then had different people making runs in those areas. So it's sort of shown that we're capable of it, but we maybe didn't do it enough. So, you know, if it was me, I'm, I'd be asking more questions of keep doing what's been successful for us, you know, in the next game. Do you feel like with the pressure of, of it being a home tournament and us going one nil up, they kind of wanted to reserve that and then maybe wasn't as positive mm. as they could have been. Yeah, we were talking about it, weren't we? I, it did feel a bit like that, yeah. didn't it? It felt like we got the goal, let's just keep this. Yeah. I don't want to make any mistakes. And there's like people just don't want to make mistakes rather than trying to get the second or the third. And that might be first game in a tournament sort yeah, of syndrome, yeah. if you like, because that's not been what we've been doing in the second half once we've scored in previous games, right, is it? Right, yeah, exactly. So, you know, I think maybe that's uh, just Part a byproduct of, of that, really. But hopefully not something that we carry into the next game. Well, that's what's quite interesting is the past few games, we've not been having the best starts games. In the second half, we've been turning on and scoring those goals. And then it was almost the complete opposite today. Yeah, so it'll be really interesting to see how it goes throughout the tournament. So the next game is, is just against Norway. Not, not a big deal at all. Um, I'm not going to lie. We know, how, we know how good they are. They've got some incredible players. I'm slightly more nervous for it now. Don't get me wrong, I've never underestimated Norway at all. Well, just after today's weeks. game. Yeah, yeah obviously we won, we got the goal, we've won this, and that is all that matters, right? But I can't say that I may be as confident. I'm confident, I'm getting Beth Mead hat trick. <laughs> Again, 3-1. <laughs> Haven't got tickets to the games? Well, the pub is the next best thing. So head to welovesport.co to find your nearest pub and enjoy the action. OK, enough from you. Uh, Rianne, what, what do you think? What are your thoughts heading into that Norway game? 
I, th I think you have to be really careful in tournaments not to get caught up in the emotions of one game because right, obviously right. everything Serena's done since she's come into the team has been building and building and building to get us to a point to be capable of competing against every single one of these teams in this tournament. So because, you know, it's not been really, really convincing with a scoreline doesn't mean to say that it's not ticked the boxes of the game plan that she's set out and they've achieved that, you know, so we, and we're not privy to all of the nitty gritty about what that game plan is. Because we did have is. chances in that game to go 2-0 up or 3-0 uh, yeah. We had extra chances to score. Yeah. So it's not like we was like completely just bad or, or, or cagey, like we did have chances to score and, uh, yeah. and at times that like, the scoreline probably doesn't fit the whole game. Yeah. If you don't concede, you get a point, don't you? So ultimately, um, defensively is as important as the thing that we like to talk about a lot which is how many goals are scored but if, if you don't concede you don't lose yeah, so yeah. ultimately you know going into that game knowing that players like Hegerberg and, and Graham Anson and, and you know there's there's several players that are capable of scoring but we've showed that we can be resilient we were resilient against Spain in the Arnold Clark Cup at, you know a few months ago before we'd had all this extra prep uh, you know, that's a very good footballing team that that creates chances. You know, so I just think it's managing the you know the emotions after the game and yeah, yeah, yeah. not getting carried away one way Are or the other. Are you aiming that at me? Just in general. Just in general. She's a bit scared. She's a bit scared all of a sudden. I know, just but it's general. hard not to be because I think you, you do right. You get really you buy into it and buy into the hype. And yeah. don't get me wrong, I probably sound fairly negative now. I still think we're going to win yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think we're excellent and I think Serena Wiegmann has been so impressive but I guess it's more the reality has hit home a little bit yeah, for me tonight. Yeah. Everyone, everyone can, did you, would you guys say like Austria's performance today kind of puts a spanner in the work in the group because they're, and like now they'll, they'll give, it won't surprise me, they'll give every team a game. Yeah. And like they won't just be a team that you can just go and beat basically. But yeah. I, I, not so much, I hear what you're saying. Um, I think you, you can't mite anyone off, you can't underestimate anyone. But for me, in this group, I mean, so at the time of recording, tomorrow Northern Ireland are playing Norway. Uh, Northern Ireland is their first major tournament. I, I can't see anything but a Norway win, being honest. Then we play Norway. I, I, I have no idea, that's going to be tight. I reckon both teams will score. But I don't see, I see Norway beating Austria. Uh, for me, it's still Norway, England. Up there, but I'm just saying that that Norway Austria game won't be easy for Norway. No, no yeah, definitely it not. Won't be easy. No, because those times in the games today, I was, I was scared like they might they might equalise. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that if we had the one 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 draw, that's just a, a whole different tournament now. Yeah, like yeah. That, yeah. I think the most important games are the first the first two games really to try and get a little bit of a build of uh, performances and confidence. Yeah. So you know, I don't know. Let's say we draw on Monday or whatever, but. Ultimately, if the performance is improved off the back of this one, you're still in the tournament and you're still building for what's coming next. And ultimately, that's that's the most important thing. So as long as you keep chipping away, getting points, you know, it, we've got a three points massive for get, getting you out of a group, you know. So it, I think it's just managing the expectation a little bit that actually there's been a lot of positives. We've got the first one out of the way. We've dealt with a big crowd. With any anxieties that were there, you just need to be able to move them to one side now and just yeah, focus yeah, on doing yeah. what you're good at, you know? Do you feel like, like England were going to have to play the occasion each each game? It's like, it's not just, today they didn't feel like a normal game. It felt mm. like much more than just, you know, 90 minutes on the pitch. It was like a whole occasion they were also playing, like managing the crowd, managing yeah. their own emotions. Do you feel like we're going to have to go through that each game? Well, maybe. I mean, because obviously we're expecting big crowds at every one of our games, mm. aren't we? So, but, you know, hopefully now that this one's done, it's given enough of an experience to kind of relax into the next and enjoy it a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. I think whenever you get three points as well, there's a bit of a sense of relief off the back of that, isn't there? Like, yeah, that. OK, yeah, we, we've set ourselves up. That's all right now, so we just move on to the next one. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I think they'll be revelling in the crowds, by the way. I know we're talking about it in the context of being a bit of pressure, but also it's just a massive... Excitement as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. excitement and sometimes that can create a bit of an overstimulus rather than it being anxiety, do you know right, what I mean? Right, oh, right, right. So Massively. it could be the other way around. It's probably quite overwhelming as well for mm. some of the younger players who might not be used to playing in front of such a massive, massive crowd like mm. that. It, yeah, it's probably the, the excitement. It is a mixture, right? You're excitement. Buzzing, yeah. yeah, you're buzzing. buzzing yeah. Like It'll be the adrenaline, everything. Um, I have no doubt that there have been a lot of people in pubs 
all, all over the country watching and, and cheering on the team tonight. How big do you think this is going to be for the nation? And I feel like, especially the further England get touch wood, in, in the tournament, it's going to have that real, like, togetherness. I love that word when we're talking about the yeah, national yeah. team. I feel, like, I feel like this tournament has reminded me a bit of, like, the 2012 Olympics, because last year when like, I first saw, like, a massive boom. But I think with, with this year, especially with the, with the aid of social media as well, because like so, much, so many of the, of, of the girls are stars within their own right because of social media. So I think that, plus it being in England, this makes this tournament even more massive and the profiles of the players grow even more. Yeah, I agree with that. I think every time there's a major tournament, so you, obviously you mentioned the Olympics, it was obviously it was here, great, so we're kind of generating a buzz. Off the back of that, fans increased for the game. You then go 2015 World Cup in Canada, we do well, you know, so all of a sudden there's a big like following at home and the game grows, the yeah. fan base grows, you know, it's becoming more of attraction towards broadcast and obviously the knock on effect of that is where we are now to the point that you just made and that's kind of come off the back of every time there's been a major tournament that England have been involved in, right, right. there's always a significant boost off the back of it. So I think, you know, this one again, I think the timing of it's great with the growth of women's football and off the back of it now, I think we'll just see even more you know, benefits coming out of it. And I know we're talking about this crowd as obviously being a real positive today, but it'd be great to be sitting here in, you know, two two years' time. The, the, that, those that's the normal, are normal. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that's kind of where we want to get to, isn't it, really? Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because I know that's um, a point that's debated quite a bit about, within women's football, about constantly talking about, oh, look how great the attendance is. And, mm. But we kind of also, I think, do need to address it when it is still not the norm. Right, yeah. and it's really impressive, and hopefully, yeah, in the next few years, it will get to a point where that is just standard. Yeah. But for now, whilst we're still part of the growth, I feel like it's natural that you're going to talk about, it, you're going to discuss it, and um, I feel like we've probably spoken about dark horses and stuff earlier. But for this tournament, it, but well, firstly, do you guys both think that England are going to win it? Yeah, of course, come on. <laughs> Definitely right. getting 11 goals this time. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. No, I, I, think, I think we have a, as you said, like, just because we've got such a strong, like, squad. Like, I remember during the game you said when, when Chloe Kelly was coming on, like, all of these players were coming mm. on. You were just like, can you imagine Austria at that point? Like, oh my God, like, we've got so many players like, that, that can carry us in there. Like, when games get tough or people get injured or someone's not playing that well, we can just swap it and then it just, people just fall back in the system. So I think with that, we have a really, really good, and with it being at home as well, we have a really, really good chance. But obviously there's like Spain and France, they're like all, all great teams. But I do think that we have a genuinely good chance to win it. Sort of thing. I don't want to get too excited. Yeah, I, th I think for me, the, obviously you take it one step at a time, but the group is a great start from a group perspective. But we're, we will most likely face, well, we'll face someone out of Group B, the Germany, Spain, Finland, Denmark group, which is a tough group, mm -hmm. and um, you'd sort of favour Germany or Spain to, to, or them two to be the two that come out of that group, and that's who we'll get in the quarterfinal. So I think that then becomes like a significant hurdle, and you, you get over that hurdle, and the confidence will be flying. And, and then for me, I think we get through that. I think there's a strong chance of us being yeah, yeah. in the final. Yeah, yeah that will be, but even in that group, like Denmark, you can't, yeah, no, you can't yeah. write them off. Finland as well, I've got two players there. Yes. It'll kill me if I don't mention it. <laughs> shout so, out Finland! Shout out to Finland, Evan Tinney. I'll be <laughs> representing strong. <laughs> yeah, they're like, hello, what about us in this group? Um, but I feel like we also need to mention with Spain, incredible squad. They've just had a massive, massive blow with Alexia Pateas with her ACL injury. Mm. So, so unfortunate for her. Terrible timing. Um, we know that that is also a, a horrendous injury to get. That is, that's a, a blow for Spain. And don't get me wrong, I know they have a lot of talent in that mm. side. But, I mean, everyone was telling her is obviously one to watch Ballon d'Or winner. We know how incredible she is. Yeah. That's going to be a, a big play for the Spanish team then. We were talking about it weren't we saying it could, it could be and then you could also see the elevation yeah, 
from the rest of the team to go, well, we need to stand up and be counted a little bit more, you know. So I think it'll be interesting to see what that ad does actually look like. Obviously, it's devastating. Yeah, you know, it, it I, being so close to, yeah. the, to the tournament, psychological could, have, could affect them. It's, it's a tough, I mean, obviously, it's a horrendous injury, you know. It's too common, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and obviously, Germany have had similarly with Marisan as well, who's a major player for them. And, and so, you know, both teams have suffered significantly in midfield with two key players. Um, but I think it's just a case of, you know, that's what the squad's there for, and they've got to rally around and do the job, haven't they? Yeah. So, ahead of our next game against Norway, what positives then can we take from tonight? I think, like, as it. As you guys have been saying, we've got the three points and we've, we've got over the hurdle of it being at home. It, this is a massive thing. We know that we can win a game. Um, so I think that's going to be massive. But then also we've just got so much depth and so many players today just didn't even come on who are like great players. So I think we can take that into like, that we can rest players and we can swap things around and we can be more positive, I think. I think that's like a major thing that we know there's another gear that we can yeah. get to. Yeah. Um, and we did that, and we got the three points without getting to that gear already. So I think if we just up another gear, I think we'd be a bit, a bit too much for Norway, if I'm, if I'm being honest. I think the positives for me, it's clean sheet, and also, you know, you made the point that we scored first half and we've been scoring more second half. So we've scored first half and held on to the game. So we've controlled the, the win, really, as yeah. well, which is something that's not really happened that way around, first half, second half sort of thing. So that's showing a different side to us as well, where we've come out flying in the second half, whereas we've got it and we've held on to it for a long period of the game. So it's just constant little psychological builds, really, that you can take confidence from that take you into the next game. Absolutely. And just with your experience, out of interest, what is it about Serena Wiegmann that just seems to be really working with this team? I think the most important thing for any team is that you've got clarity in what your role is and you understand the value that you add to the team. And whenever players are able to utilise their strengths to good effect, obviously that builds confidence as well. So you can tell by the way that the subs come on and change games that everybody's wanting to contribute because you know and subs are coming on and they don't really impact the game or they look a little bit tentative or whatever that affects your whole squad and what you're capable of yeah, achieving yeah. but that's not look like that so I think that part of it is enabling players to, to sort of play to their full potential and we were talking about it earlier I think the other side to it as well is we've always had good attacking players but it's never sort of fluidly worked on a consistent basis um, whereas it's it's happening more frequently now. And I think that comes from having a bit of a structure where everybody understands, but having the freedom to work within that structure with the creativity of like a Lauren Hemp and Chloe Kelly, Ella Toon, Georgia Stanwyck. You know, the list is quite significant. Um, so there's, there's, there's some ballers you named there. So. <laughs> yeah. The, serious ballers. But I think if you enable people to play to their strengths within a structure that everybody kind of understands, then you get more out of them because they're doing the things that they're really good at and that's definitely something we've seen leading into the tournament. They just seem like they, they believe in what she whatever message she's portraying to them. Yeah. So they all there's there's like a sense of togetherness, they're all kind of behind and they I feel like maybe there's a sense of like they can they believe they can yeah. do it. Mm. And she's kinda of installed that belief. Obviously her previous successes as well have probably helped that and be like, yeah I'm gonna buy into what she's saying because she's done it before. And I just feel like they have a sense of like belief like they can just go and go and beat anyone and play against anyone. Yeah. Oh, I'm buying it. Yeah. Whatever she's selling, I'm buying, I'm buying it. it. I'm, buying it. <laughs> I'm here as well. <laughs> um, okay, so Northern Ireland, Norway. Well, how, how do you think that's going to go? Score predictions or just result? I think he's a bit harsh with with, with Northern I'll Ireland. Be uh, Andrew. <laughs> I think he's a bit harsh there, man. I'm going to go two one Norway. Good game. I thought you were going to go Northern Ireland <laughs> in there. No, not not that confident. <laughs> no, no. Mm. I just I think Northern Ireland will have a really good go at Norway because yeah. you know there's one thing that you know for certain they are passionate about getting results and mm. you know that they're going to work hard all the way through the game they're going to give it everything and they'll disrupt teams and cause problems um, so you know I, I think they can cause an upset actually and you Ooh. know what just in general I think they can cause an upset I don't know if it will be against Norway tomorrow but. They've got they've got such a lot of character that I think they could yeah. cause a problem for you know someone. What? Now I you hope said it's that. It's not us. I'm going one <laughs> no. one. I'm going one one. Oh, 
Oh, but that's the thing though, is that the pressure's not really on them. No, they're the underdog, no one, yeah, if you like. No one's expecting too much. No yeah, one's really no one looking. Them, like, yeah, 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 but it's true. <laughs> and and that's what might then come back round to bite us because yeah. yeah, we're going, oh, it's probably not they'll put up a good fight, but but actually you never know. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Don't underestimate the fight of small countries. I'm yeah, telling yeah. you. Yeah, there you go, wise words. Yeah. Um, and then of course Monday, England, Norway. What are we thinking? I'm saying three one man, Beth made hat trick. I'm gonna get a hat you, I'm gonna <laughs> keep saying someone's gonna score a hat trick and it's gonna happen. And then at some point eventually. Right. Yeah. And then whenever it gets around with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, as long yeah. as you put a bet on that day, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, look, I think um I think we'll learn a lot from this game and I think take the positives from previous games and I'd like to think we can win the game. I think we'll make it really hard for them. Um yeah, I think we'll get something. I think we'll get a point as a minimum out of this game. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Enjoy good. the rest yeah. of the tournament. Fingers crossed it's coming home. Thank you so much <laughs> for listening. And we'll see you next time. That's it from us. Don't forget to subscribe to the Women's Football Podcast on all podcasting platforms. We'll see you next time in Birmingham. For more information, visit welovesport.co. See you then.